All right, everyone, Caleb Roth, the book flipper here from thebookflipper.com. Very pleased to announce a partnership with Nathan Holmquist from booktothefuture.com. He's got a great software many of you are familiar with called ScanLister, and I've got a spreadsheet that I put together. I'm a data guru, or at least a self-proclaimed one, and I've got a tracking spreadsheet that allows you to really track all of your sales on Amazon. Now, I'm a book guy. You could use this to track anything you want. It's specifically built for books, but again, it'll work with any products that you're selling on Amazon. Now, the beauty of what this is, is you can simply put all the data that you get, and there's some, uh, some ways to transfer the data from Inventory Lab or um, just regular from Amazon if you want. But the better the data you have, so if you can track sales rank and all of that, you're going to get some really good metrics and be able to understand which books you should be buying and which books you should be leaving on the shelf. And you can find a strategy that really fits your personality, your budget, your goals, etc. So the sales data functionality is a simple report you pull from Amazon. It's very easy to pull. That's always been very simple for the tracking spreadsheet. And then there's lots of other metrics which it can show. The listing data has always been the challenge. I've got a listing spreadsheet. Some people don't like to use spreadsheets. And so I had a number of my customers say, hey, we really like ScanLister. Is there any way you can get it to integrate with ScanLister? And I said, sure, let me reach out to Nathan. Nathan was very uh, receptive to the idea. And within about a week or two, we actually had his programmer build this up to where now you can actually export your data into the tracking spreadsheet. So Nathan, thank you for doing that. Let me give you a quick demo of how this works. For those of you who may not be familiar with ScanLister, let me show you how that works as well. And we'll show you kind of how that partnership was born and how you can benefit from it. So this is ScanLister. I'm on a Mac. It's a, apparently it's got a few more features on Windows, but I found that it works pretty well on a Mac as well. Just for clarification, I use my own listing software. It's just a, a spreadsheet-based listing system. It works very well for me. However, ScanLister is very good for speed. It's a downloaded system, either on your Mac or your PC. Some people like that, some people don't. The real benefit is it's a single time fee. So you can pay a monthly fee to get it, or you can just pay a one time fee and it's yours for life. I really like that philosophy, that mentality. Um, and I've done the same thing with my tracking spreadsheet. You pay it once, you get all the lifetime updates and upgrades for free. So what you do with ScanLister is you can put in your SKU prefixes, and I'm just gonna pretend here that I went to the Denver Library sale on April 15, and I bought a bunch of books. We're gonna start with our SKU number as 100, let's just, just for kicks, and my supplier is gonna be the Denver Library. My default price, and this is if you use a repricer, and we can get into that another time. I am not a big fan of repricers. Uh, I know a lot of people have good success with it. Again, you can run your business how you want. If you're going to use a repricer, just put a default price, let's say $200 for starters. Quantity is going to be one, and then my cost per book in this case is $1.50. Now, if you sort your books by condition first and use a repricer, this is a very good, fast, efficient way to run a business. So what you can do here is I've got, all, I've got books in two piles. One is good, and the other is very good. None of these have library markings. We're just going to run right through it. So the way you do it is you can set up a USB barcode scanner. Simply scan your book, it's gonna pop it right in and it's gonna spit everything out. So it builds our SKU for us. It's got a purchase price built in. It actually pulls the rank on Amazon, so 619,000. That's pretty good, it sold a couple days ago. Product ID is our ASIN in this case. We've got one, good condition. Um, min price of one, max price of 100. And again, you can change that if you want. Uh, you've got your notes, etc. So it basically builds the listings out for you. And if you pre-sort your books by condition, you can simply burn through books just as fast as you can scan them into your computer. And this is a very efficient way to list books on Amazon. Now, if you're like me, you'd probably prefer to price these out individually. And you can do that. So you can click on an item and say, hey, I want to show the prime prices on Amazon. Um, again, I've got the Keepa extension installed in my browser, so I can look at that and see this book is selling often in the last three months, and maybe I want a price, maybe $15.94 match this price here, or potentially come way up here depending on how aggressive I'm feeling with the price. Since this book is selling for two bucks, I'd probably opt for the faster sale and match the $15.94 price um, and try and get that out the door as fast as possible. So you could do that if you want and individually price these out, or you can let your repricer handle it, or you can price them right before they hit inventory, no problem. Then what you can do is go to Very Good and scan your next several books in. And again, if you have you know, several hundred books that you've brought home from a library trip, this is gonna make your process much easier once you've prepped the books and you're ready to go. 
So once you've scanned in your thousands of books or however many you were fortunate enough to pull from the library sale, you're all set. You can go ahead and say list on Amazon. It's going to say listing is complete. Now let me show you how you extract this data back out. So what Nathan's done is he's got a recent uploads tab and you can see this most recent one of eight. Now you're going to want to go in and print your stickers and do your shipment and all that and figure out what your costs are. But what you can do here is then you're going to come down and say, all right, my total shipping cost for these eight, eight items, let's just say it was, I don't know, 550 for example. Then we're going to say export. So it's going to give you this and we can say, hey, Denver Library or whatever you want to call it. And we'll just save it to the desktop, make it simple. Done. And you can see right here, it got saved off in the corner of my desktop. What it does when you open this text file, it's going to save it in the exact formatting you need for the tracking spreadsheet. So you can simply hit Control A or Command A if you're on a Mac. That's Command All. Copy and then paste it into the tracking spreadsheet. And this format is exactly lined up just like we need it. Now, one thing you may want to do is come in here and just delete that SKU out. Delete this header column. And once you're done with that, this data is now in the exact right format that you need to use this tracking spreadsheet. Okay, so we've got our source lined up. The date code isn't really necessary, so you can ignore that. It's got our average, you know, our shipping cost per book or per item. It's got our total cost, total list price. Now your total list price is gonna look a little odd if you're using a repricer, because they're all gonna come in at $200 but this is then gonna feed nicely and you're gonna be able to track and see exactly how much money you've made over time at the Denver Library sale. So if we come over here to source metrics and this is just a, just a little test data, we're gonna say refresh data and the Denver Library is gonna pop up. We've got eight items, total list price again because we listed at $200 a piece is gonna show up as $1,600. Average sales rank, very good, it's excellent. Total sales and as these start selling, and we pull our sales reports in, we're gonna be able to see how much sales we've made, our inventory cost is accurate, average cost, inbound shipping, et cetera, and it's gonna let us know what profit we've made over time, as well as what ROI. So you can know if certain suppliers, certain thrift stores, certain library sales actually make you money, or if they lose you money. Now in books, your margins are great, you should be making money, but again, I wanted to show you how this works. We've got a number of other updates coming to the tracking spreadsheet in the near future, one of those already exists, it's a sales rank analysis, so you can get a feel of what percentage of your books are selling by sales rank and whether you should buy higher ranked books or maybe ignore them. We're gonna start doing a list price analysis, so if you wanna see what percent of your books that are cheaper are selling versus more expensive, you can get an idea of that. Also, condition analysis. Be looking for a blog post in the near future. Again, this is sample data, so don't, don't look at these numbers per se. But uh, it's actually intriguing what percent of books sell, and uh, you'd think that very good books would sell better than acceptable. Spoiler alert, they might not sell as well as you think. So be on the lookout for that post in the near future. These features here are not quite part of the tracking spreadsheet yet that's commercial, but uh, if you buy it now when they come available, you'll, you'll get those updates for free. You can check out your inventory turn rates. If you're selling on consignment for other people, you can see how much you owe them. You can put your mileage, your supplies in, and then you can actually build income statements for any given month, dates, weeks, month, years, whatever you want. You can see how many of your items Amazon's losing, what your refund rate, your return rate, what percent of, uh, of the overall sales actually comes in as profit margin. Uh, cost of goods sold, if you're tracking your cost of inventory, that's going to be in there as well, which is super nice. Uh, again, lots of functionality. Your accountant will thank you. So that's the tracking spreadsheet in a nutshell. If you want to learn more about either ScanLister or the tracking spreadsheet, I'll have links down below. Click them, check them out. And again, I want to say a very, uh, a very good thank you. Thanks, Nathan, Nathan Holmquist, for helping us out, for adding that functionality to ScanLister. And I wish you all much success in book selling.